loved every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise. Good evening, welcome to the NAACP Forum. We are Brockton's choice for civil rights news. I'm excited tonight because I have Nubi Rato, the executive producer of Protect, Serve, and Care, Emmy nominee 2016 for Out of Bounds. What brings you into the studio? Well, first of all, <laughs> thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Oh my God, it's my honor. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate everyone in the NAACP and thank all you, the sir. things that you guys do. Uh, it really means a lot to me to, uh, to be on here. It's, it's funny, you know, being on, on this side. Yeah, you're right, exactly. The camera, which, is, which is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, I'm here for, for a documentary that we're, we're screening. Um, you guys uh, decided to co-sponsor with us, which yes. I'm really excited about. And so it's called Protect, Serve, and Care. And I think this documentary, it's about policing in the relationship between police and the minority community. And I think this documentary is going to save lives. You say, so if I've heard you say that before, why do you say you believe it's going to save lives? I think... Rather than a documentary, sometimes I call this the, this work an instructional manual. Oh, of, okay. Of how to interact with police um, and how police should interact with the community. Right, it, right. You know, so I, I think there are certain things that um, that c the community does that could escalate a situation. Oh, wait a minute! You blame it on the community, right? though. And then there's things that officers do. Okay, that all right. A situation. I mean, you don't. You know, a lot of times people don't hear, you know, what so-and-so really calmed down the situation. So mm -hmm. I think it's just a, a matter of, you know, people not understanding each other. Mm -hmm. And I think this documentary is going to make it a little more transparent for people to know more respect each other and right. understand each other. So you believe that there should be dis the de-escalation on both sides. Is that, fair? Is that fair to say? Absolutely. I think, there's, uh, I think there's some egos going on on both ways and, and, and some misconceptions of how um, people act and some stereotypes that... Um, that kind of gives that kind of fuel that, and I, I think this documentary just says, you know, let's just cut the BS, mm -hmm. let's just tell the stories um, about what's going on, the good, bad, and the ugly. We don't hold any punches in this documentary. We just tell you the story about what's going on, and then let's say, how do we improve it? So let me just ask you. So, uh, do you have any children? I do not. If you had a black son, knowing what you know from this documentary, what would you be saying to your black son? Well, I have five nephews, though. Ah, you know, okay. I have nephews and I'm a teacher, so I always say I have, you know, dozens and those, dozens. Those are your children. Those, those, are, my those are your children. children. What would you say to them? Well I, well, I would say to them, number one, is that um, there's a point, there's a detective in a documentary. His name was Detective Gary Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. and he said, Which police force? Uh, for New York uh, Police York? Department. New York, okay. He was a New York detective. And he said something that was very crucial. I thought that was very important in the documentary. He said, if you have control of your mind, the officer will never have control of your body. I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, there's a situation, maybe, you know, we're going out to a party or something like that, and, you know, whether it's liquor is, is involved or, you know, people are just having a bad day, some hot tempers are flaring. Right. We lose control of our mind. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we do things and say things that could escalate the situation. Now, there's stories in this documentary where people have lost their lives. Mm -hmm. They don't deserve to lose their lives. Right, right. But there are situations that could escalate that to lead to that point. And this documentary is just trying to say, let's not... Before we get to the actual end point where someone loses their life, mm -hmm. let's figure out what goes on before that. Mm -hmm. Before that, and so what I would say, you know, to my nephews or or any of my students, mm -hmm. is you know you got to be controlled this, mm -hmm. okay, and start thinking, okay, if I do A, okay, B is going to happen, so maybe I shouldn't do A. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should chill out a little bit. Maybe mm -hmm. I should actually, you know, what? Let's walk away from the situation. That's it too. Not just with police, just mm. in general. Right, right. You know, right. And, and I've been there. I'm 30 years old right now, but you know, I've had my my college, you know, partying, clubbing mm -hmm. days, mm -hmm. and situations could have happened. But we just gotta have cooler heads prevail. And I, I think that's really important. You know, particularly the young black kids mm -hmm. from that teenage to that mid 20 years. So, but Nubi, because I can I can hear people asking the question, but you're not dismissing driving. While black, though, you're not dismissing uh, going through certain communities, especially in the Commonwealth, where police officers would see 
uh, black people that are normally not in their community, and they do a stop. Uh, you're not dismissing those statistics. Though. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I don't, I don't think they need to be, I don't think they should be dismissed. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why I said I think it's an issue where both sides need to take a, a lens of what, what's going on. And I think this documentary does that. It takes a look at, a, a real hard look at what the police need to do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, to properly serve their community. You know, a lot of times in, in this documentary, and just in general, we, you know, give kudos for community service rather than community policing. But, so you've said that. Tell the community, define what that means. Community services, I'm going to throw an event not out against crime. And we're going to give out, you know, some free pamphlets and, and, uh, and you know, show you some different resources and, and give out, you know, a, a cookout. A basketball tournament. A basketball tournament sort of stuff. Those right. are great events. But you, you consider that community service. That's community service. Right. That's not community policing. Okay. Community policing is this. Let me give you an example. The, um, there's a, there's a, a group of citizens in Boston. Yes, sir. Who are concerned about unarmed black men being killed. Right. Okay. So okay. they went to the Boston uh, Police Department and they went to the mayor's office and they decided to write up a pilot program of body cameras. Something the community wants, okay, writing <clears throat> something on paper, some type of mm -hmm. feedback, mm -hmm. given to a, the politicians, your police department, and working together, mm -hmm. okay, to implement something, mm -hmm. okay, that the community is concerned about. I think that's community police, the community and the police working together, okay, community service. I think a lot of times we just get in trouble with that in general. All right, right. I, I, right. I, I, I don't want to stir too much on another topic, but let me just give you an example to prove this point. Colin Kaepernick and the whole kneeling situation, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times you go over from community to action community service. Oh, Colin Kaepernick's kneeling. This is an uncomfortable situation for everybody. Mm -hmm. Let's dish out some money to the nonprofit, to a Boys and Girls Club. And that's what we've heard. To, to a YMCA. Just, just, just. Right, 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 right. Just, right. Let's do that community service just to, you know, know the situation, just to right. make everyone, you know what? Throw some money at We're it. We're helping. Right, right. Rather than actually really tackling an issue. Right. I, I think a lot of times we're, we're missing that community action where we're just doing community service, which is great. It's necessary. It's needed. But I think we've gone way to that side rather than really tackling some uncomfortable issues. Let me just be clear. I'm not an expert. I'm just a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm telling people stories. Yeah, but this is your advocacy. I'm, I'm telling people stories. But yeah. So I'm, I'm a citizen just like you. Yep, I'm not yep. an expert on the situation. Yep, yep. But this is what I've been hearing from the interviews, what people have been telling me. You know, I've, I've kind of, um, you know, gone to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. So let me just ask you, are you familiar, familiar with what's happening with the newly elected district attorney in Suffolk County, Rachel Rollins, a woman of color, being sued by the National Police uh, Organization? They're basically saying, and they're, quote, they felt that she is reckless and uh, has a reckless disregard because she's looking for equitable justice in, in Boston. Uh, I guess my question to you, well, in Suffolk County, my question to you is in looking at the documentary that you have done and talking to police officers and talking to the community, is it a us against them? No, and if, well, let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. If it is, it shouldn't. Okay. Okay? If it is, it shouldn't. Because, listen, my friends are police officers. Mm -hmm. Where I grew up in high school. Mm -hmm. They're not police officers. We're in it together, whether we like it or not. You know, right, what was, right, the, was, right. the, was the Martin Luther King quote? You know, we all came from different ships, right. but we're in the same boat now. <laughs> so mm -hmm, ultimately, mm -hmm. listen, if it's us against them, that needs to stop now. Okay, cold turkey. Right, right. Because we're in this together. So I, I think, you know, to answer your question, who knows? Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you the solution. We got to start working together. We got to hey, start working together. Do you, with respect to uh, Philando Castile and Alton Sterling, how does that fit in? to the narrative of your, your, of your documentary? There's a part of the documentary, um, the first about 10 minutes or so, comes out really aggressive. You know, we come out, you know, it's uncomfortable. Listen, I edited the documentary. I'm uncomfortable watching it. Mm -hmm. But we talk about fear. And we talk about just having- On both sides? Fear, no, fear particularly on the police side, side. looking at black men. Okay, okay, okay. yep, yep. Um, we talk about that fear of, let me give you a, a, a statistic which is very interesting. 98% of directors, Okay, are white, white males. Okay. When you say directors, directors, film directors. Oh, okay. Okay. So oh, oh. when we are watching a movie, <laughs> okay. When we are watching a movie, we are seeing how white people perceive black people 
and black people are watching that. Okay? So they may see me walking down the street, okay? I'm a pretty big guy, mm -hmm. relatively, you know, down the street at 10 o'clock at night. They don't know I'm a teacher. They don't know I've been nominated for an Emmy Award, okay? They don't know that I've worked in the mayor's office, okay? They're seeing perceptions of me through the media. That's a fear that needs to stop. So when you see, when you see a perception of how someone is through the media, mm -hmm. through one lens, mm -hmm. it's dangerous, mm -hmm. okay? So listen, a city like a, a Brockton or a diverse city, you know, the chance of that, of something happening like that might be a little slimmer. But what if I'm living in, 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 uh, in Texas, in, in, in the deep south, mm -hmm. where there's not too many people of color at a particular place, or mm -hmm. live, living mm -hmm. in the Midwest, and I'm walking down the street? That could be a dangerous situation. That could be a dangerous situation. So we first talk about that fear of how people fear black people, mm -hmm. and that needs to stop. Okay. And on the flip side, mm -hmm. though, police officers, right? It's that one percent. It's that one percent that makes it bad for everybody. Okay. Because when I see a police officer, I may not do nothing wrong, but I might feel a certain type of way because of what I'm seeing in the news. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing the officer like Rosie Brown. Right. Who's, 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 who's really taking her time to really invest in the community. Right, right, right. You know, we're not seeing those. Right. We're seeing the officers who are shooting the unarmed black men. Right. So I think it's my responsibility mm -hmm. as a media person, okay, along with, I say my, along with um, William Adair, who's co-directed this documentary, to really educate the public on what the heck's going on. Mm -hmm. And let's just cut out the BS. Here's what it is. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And now you make a decision of what's going on. So, so newbie, I mean, you know, like tell people all the time when, when I'm interviewing, when you come into the forum, it's just like sitting in my living room having a conversation. So I'm going to just kind of go that route and ask you this. Isn't some of this our fault? Some of the, some of the actions of young black men in, in particular, uh, some of the things that they do, some of the stuff that they do on social media that they think is real life, do, have we added to the stereotypes of what white film directors are, are portraying in their cinema. I think it's kind of the chicken and the egg. Why do you say that? And I'm not, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I, I mean, okay, all right. I, I, I don't think so. I think, I think it's the chicken and the egg because, okay. you know, a lot of times the people we, we work together with, mm -hmm. they're not like that. But that's the people you and I, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because that's the ones that we're working with. But there not there a certain element that's outside of that? Sure. That, I'll give you an example. I'm on the MBTA bus and uh, uh, I was, it was, it, my time was working at Mass Journal. Get on the MBTA bus, get on the orange line, and all I hear is our own people in that, be that, thought that, S that, F that. And then the MBTA police being called, they come on, Every, you know, MBTA police is a little aggressive. I see the negative interaction, but I also see that there's just an element in the community that just are just not behaving. So, you know, I don't want to sound like one of those guys on Fox News, but I'm saying, do we add to this, this problem? I mean, I think the black community I, I, needs to have this conversation. Yeah, do we add to this problem? Do we add to it? Yes. Could we add to it? To answer your question, probably, but I think that's a, that's a symptom. Okay, to a to a bigger issue, you know. When we talk about you know, our, I mean, our, but come on, we were raised. We don't disrespect. We don't get on the train and and curse out people. We were raised that uh, to limit our profanity if possible. Okay, but I would I would I would argue, you know, 20, 30 years ago, there were two parents in the household. Is that the case no more? It's more known for you to have one parent in the household. Right, right. Most likely the mother. Right. Okay. Typically, the father is the authoritarian figure, that the, the kind of disciplined person. Typically. Right. 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 No, I okay. got it. Yeah. 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 So when you don't have that going on, how do you know right from wrong? When well, you weren't taught that, you were not taught right from wrong. So we. So you. So is is it that kind of an admission that we're leaving it up to law enforcement and the criminal justice system? Leave it up to law enforcement. Leave it to teachers. And oh, know, that's a big piece of this, right? Okay. To the teachers, right? Right. 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 So, but let, let's let's back it up. Maybe because so and so was locked up for. Something they didn't deserve to be locked up for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Something like weed that's not legal. Now, so, right, so, right. So yeah. we're, we're, I mean, on, on the surface, yeah. black, maybe black youth are not respecting authority. But let's back it up a little bit. Right. Maybe there's one parent in the household. Maybe that father. But well, why okay. is it the, the issue with the police? 
He ever heard you ever some of these shows with that they, might be yep. the first time they're interacting with, with an authority figure and they don't know how to react. And so then you have a police officer saying we're dealing with animals on a daily basis. What do you say to that? You, what I say to that is, you know what, you got to really go into your community because mm -hmm. that's the case. If you think your community is animals, mm -hmm. then you know what, you got to figure out and solve the problem. During your documentary, did you find that there's a difference? Um, in, in looking at the perspective of the community, a difference, the, there's a different perspective of a white law enforcement officer versus a black law enforcement officer in working with the community. Yeah, I think, to answer your question, yes. I, was, I actually interviewed um, two white police officers, mm -hmm. the police mm -hmm. chief in um, East Bridgewater, Scott Allen, and I interviewed um, Frank Chanowski. Brockton. Uh, Brockton? Yeah, okay, okay. Brockton. No, no Brockton chief police interview? No, I did not, no. Yeah, because we're still, that was kind of disturbing. Why, why didn't, and not to, I need you to answer the question, but why didn't you get an interview with the Brockton chief of police? Well, we reached out, um, we reached out to them, and for some reason or another. It never happened. It, it never happened. So was it delegated to Frank? Do you know, officially? No, so what happened was he did ask permission to be on the Okay, film, okay, and okay. And he was granted permission. So, okay, all right. He was, he was granted permission. And okay. So we decided, no, we got permission to interview Commissioner Gross. Yeah. So we decided, let's just go that route. Let's just go that route and, um, and interview him as a commissioner. But, so we interviewed um, two white officers. Yeah. Actually, I should say three, because we interviewed, actually, current city councilor, Wynn Farrell. Okay. Um, so different perspectives. And ultimately, you know, I, I thought Frank did a good point, and he actually coaches Brock tonight football, freshman football. He said, listen, if you're white and the community is predominantly Cape Verde and Haitian, it's upon you to actually go in the community and figure out what the heck's going on. I said, that's the reason why he started coaching. Mm -hmm. For people to say, you know what, let's see me without the uniform. I'm just a person just like you. Right, right. Which is huge, because if I have an issue, I don't, it's, it's not Frank the police officer, it's Frank the football coach. Right, it's Coach, it's coach Frank. Right, it's Coach right, Frank, right, which right, is huge. Right, right. That's so big. I mean, you know, when, when you have an officer that comes in for like a D.A.R.E. program or mm -hmm. what have you, it's so huge. And we love D.A.R.E. I, I see you We as, love D.A.R.E. Listen, <laughs> we did. I see we you all as love a D.A.R.E. person now. Right, 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 right. I see you as a person. That, that, that's, that's huge. I mean, let me just give you an example as a teacher, okay? If I'm in a classroom all the time, mm -hmm. it's teaching class, mm -hmm. and I don't go to a basketball game, okay? Or I don't go to extra quick activities. The only way you see me is in a class. It's mm -hmm. going to be very hard for me to, to kind of connect with you. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm really reaching out beyond the classroom. Same thing with the pastor. If you're just in the church and not outside the community, right, 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 it's right. going to be very hard for someone to relate to you. I mean, that's life. Right. It's not just policing. I mean, if you want to be a good pastor, good teacher, good politician, you're not just in the mayor's office all the time, right? right, right. You're out in the community. Same concept with policing. It's the same concept. It's really, it, it's, it's not rocket science. Mm. Okay? Humans, okay, like interaction, like to feel loved. Mm -hmm. If that happens, listen, there's some knuckleheads out there. Right. There's some knuckleheads that got to be in jail. Don't get me wrong. Okay, but 99% of people, I'm, and I truly believe most people in this world are good people. So the, the, the statistically speaking, they say they, what they're saying in terms of data, at least since 2015, there's been a decline actually in police incidents. But what we're seeing is because everybody's recording things on video, it looks like it's a constant reoccurrence. So, but the data suggests that there's been a reduction in both interactions, negative interactions with a citizen to a police and a police officer to a citizen. With that said, I don't know if I touched on the war, the war against, you know, the alleged war against police officers, but we did lose five Dallas police officers. Um, was there any discussion in your document? Did any of the cops broach that particular subject of how um, dangerous police work is and why, we, why they are the way they are in terms of being prepared for the worst? It's a split second, to answer your question, yes. Split second decision. It's a split second decision. And people need to understand, okay, at one o'clock at night, I think everyone's kind of scared what's going on. Mm -hmm. You're pulled over, mm -hmm. police officer, they may think. Whether it's the police officer or the citizen. You, know, you may big, think yeah, they're big yeah. and bad, but they, they don't know what you have. Right, right. And the biggest thing, those, um, we're talking about the, um, those, are, those are part of the document, we're talking about Oscar Grant, who, mm -hmm. which is a, a person from Oakland mm. who was, um, shot and killed point blank. Mm -hmm. And it's a devastating video. He's, he's, he's shot and killed in the back in a, in a train station. Yes, yes. And as awful as that is, I talked to the mother, and it happened in 2009, 10 years. Actually, I didn't the last year, though, so it was nine years. She's still tears coming down her eyes. I'm looking at the video, 
and there was a resist there. There wasn't following directions. It was uncomfortable saying it, but directions were not followed. Oscar got up. They said, sit down, he got up. They don't know what he has. He shouldn't have died. Let me just make that emphatically clear. He shouldn't have died. But there was a resist. Eric Garner. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Eric Garner mm -hmm. should not be dead. Mm -hmm. The officer, I think, committed murder. Mm -hmm. But Eric Garner, and this is what the, the black community needs to admit, resisted arrest. Mm -hmm. But resisting he arrest. He resisted arrest. Right. So listen, if right. you right. listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you listen, those things are not going to happen. So what officers are saying in documentaries, yeah, listen, yeah. you need to be able to listen to our instruction. Yeah, but Newby, because it's 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 to save a life. But Newby, listen to me. Listen, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, uh, sometimes Snap, and I what I see is that they people are now posting the difference between a white guy window up. You're saying, 100 yeah, right. There's there's a difference between, and that's the, and that's what we gotta attack you because the op, the the person who who shoots up okay a church. Yeah. All right. Or the person right. who shoots up everyone in Vegas. But so that's what people say when they, they say walk, the command, they, the they command. They walk away alive, and that, that's what we yeah. got. That's that. Then that's that issue right there needs to be tackled. Okay. I mean that 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 that's something that's a real issue. I mean, and when we talk about true racism, right, and white privilege, right, there it is. Right, right. So I'm not hiding behind it. Okay. But I'm, just, right, I'm right. just talking about these certain situations. Okay. I know, it, but people hear that we should have followed the commands. Like, well, everybody in the country is not following the commands. But no, I get what you're saying. I'm, I'm totally with you. But, you know, people hear, like, we should follow the commands. Well, everybody's not following the command. A white guy can talk back. A white woman can back up her car. I've seen this stuff on Facebook, and I'm like, they're going to shoot you. Then, it looks at, then I look at them and say, they're not going to shoot you because you're white. And that's the fear. That's the fear is that people fear black men. I think black people fear black people. Uh-oh. That's a whole. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> I'm, I'm your answer. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about the MBTA. I mean, these kids are really like very uh, again, inappropriate. I, I, inappropriate I, I is the think word. What we see in the media, yeah. and I truly believe I've been blessed with, with 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 the talent to do different things. Yes, you have been. God bless you. And yes. it is a responsibility <clears throat> to educate people on what the hell is going on. Right, Excuse right. My language. No, no, no. Okay? You're fine. Yeah, yeah. So, listen. The fact of the matter is, okay, I think that's when we talk about white privilege, yeah. that's it right there, bingo. Okay. Okay, the mass murder walks away alive. Right. The black person, okay, who's not even armed. Yeah, yeah, they sit him dead. down. They, they sit him down comfortable. I mean, did you, I mean, you, I know what you're talking. Everybody, I'm sure the community knows what he's talking about, some of these mass shootings where you can see the perpetrator is comfortable sitting on the curb with the handcuffs on and then, sir, get up, please. And I'm like... What? <laughs> and let me just say this. I think the good police officers need to stand up. Well, they're, I mean, let's be real. The statistically speaking, it's like 98% of, yeah, of police officers are, are lawful. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yes. But it's the 2% that is really driving America Yeah, but America the 99% crazy. needs to... Needs to Needs they're to not going to report each other. They, but they got him. Oh, Louie. Well, did you talk to, to Come on, did you talk to them? They're not going to report each other. So, other listen, than the seven in New York that did that, and look what happened to them. I mean, come on. I understand that, but that's what needs to happen. That's uh, right. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Uh, I, that's the right thing to do. Right, right. You know, and, and, and one thing that the commissioner's office in Boston doing, uh, Chief, uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Gross. Yeah, Willie Gross is a great man, great man, great you know, law they, enforcement officer. They have a, yep. a, a system now where, and again, it's, he, he'll, he'll be the first to admit it's not perfect, mm -hmm. but now, you know, if there's one or two, three complaints, they're pulled into the office and say, hey, wait, what the heck's going on? Okay. Rather than wait until 10, 15 complaints. They, tr they, try to, they try to nip that immediately, okay? There's a few complaints, only two or three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. what's going on here? We don't want this to be a, you know, Something that's a pattern. So let me ask you something, newbie. So what I've seen, especially in Boston, uh, and, and a lot of community activists, we were talking about this privately, is that we've what we. I expect to see maybe a, a cop been on the force fifteen to twenty years doing some pretty crazy stuff. Maybe it's part of the old school model. But some of the new graduate academy. There was one in Boston who's a fairly new graduate, uh, was pretty abusive to the community. Is anyone talking about? how police officers are trained. So, you know, it's funny. In terms of the training part for our documentary... Yes, sir. 
we did not have a chance to really dive into that. Part. Okay, okay. You know, because we didn't want to stretch ourselves out too thin. No, I know. I get it. So, so in terms of the training yeah. and, and going into an actual place where they train police officers, um, we didn't touch upon that. Okay, you know? all right. And it needs to be. Literally, there's so many things to actually talk about. There's a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of elements, but that's yeah, something yeah. we did not tackle. Okay. You know, we, okay. we wanted to do it, but, you know, just in terms of our time and what we wanted to accomplish, we were not able to tackle that issue. Okay. So I, I, I don't want to really dive into that part. Right. Because we haven't really tackled into it. So let me just, so we can, uh, I know where uh, my producer is telling me we're, we're, we're short for time, but I got to ask oh, wow. you, what's, 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 up, what's up with the, uh, with the jersey? What's up with that? Well, listen, it's, it's, um, <laughs> Well, so you're looking good. I gotta rep the Patriots. Wait, but you look buff, and I don't appreciate that. I gotta, I gotta work Patriots. out myself. I gotta rep the Patriots number one. Oh, okay. The Super Bowl, <laughs> and the premiere is the day before the Super Bowl. That, ooh, so right, I, I right, gotta, and, and right. then our, our school, you know, um, we want to rep the Patriots. I yeah. teach over at Lynn Tech, great students yeah. over there. So, um, you know, we're we're repping the Patriots, and I think they're gonna win. By the way, so I've been telling Newbie, Newbie's working out in Lynn. He should be in the Brockton school system. We're gonna have to figure out. How to make him I love like, Lynn, though. Yeah, I, I love my Lynn kids. We love you. But we, I know you I love, love Lynn, but we love Lynn you kids. here. Yeah, but Lynn shows you some love, though. Lynn, yeah. Lynn shows you love. <laughs> I go where I'm loved. I brought this shows you love, but Lynn shows you love, too. So tell me, what are we going to expect uh, with respect to protect, serve, and care on February 2nd? We're going to expect to be uncomfortable. Okay. We're going to expect to be educated, and it, it's going to save young black men's lives. Because there's going to be a, it, there's gonna be a time where... You watch the document, okay, you know what, I remember what that detective said. Right. I remember an Oscar Grant situation, I don't want to be the next one. I don't want to be oh, the next yeah, Amadou no. Diallo. Right, Shot right. 41 times, immigrant, yeah. shot 41 times unarmed. Right, I remember it Anniversary very well. is coming up Feb February 4th. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be, you know, a another, um, there's so many, you know, DJ Henry, Eric Garner, Fernando Castillo. Right. I mean, I can go on and on. Right. Um, so this document is going to make you uncomfortable. It's going to save lives. It's going to save lives, and that's ultimately what the heck we want to do. And the importance of this, this is this documentary is uh, being sponsored uh, in conjunction with the NAACP and Newbie Productions, but it's free. It's free. You want people to come out to see this documentary. And even better, it's free, and NAACP bought 25 DVDs, Mayor's Office, Hug Foundation, East Bridgewater Police, and Brockton Police. So everyone who walks in, gets a free copy or a digital copy, whatever they prefer. Oh, my goodness. It's exceptional. Date, February 2nd. That's a Saturday. February 2nd, Time. 2 p.m. And we're going to have a red carpet. 2 p.m.? 2 p.m. Red carpet. DJ, DJ Old School is going to be bringing down the house, play a little music when people walk in. Well, who, who, hmm, who's DJ Old School? He's a pretty big deal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my producer, Miles. <laughs> uh, any contact information? Um, the best way to get in contact with me is go to my website, newbieproductions.com. Okay. N-O-U-B-E productions.com. You get invited on the, on, on the tour, where we're going next, um, the film festivals that we're doing. We apply for the Emmys. We find out in April if we get oh, nominated or not. Praying for you. So we'll, um, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm yes. living the best life. Blessed and favored. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Nubi Reto, the executive director of Protect, Serve, and Care. Let me tell you something. This young man, 2016 Emmy nomination, the, he, and he's one of ours from Brockton. Thank you for tuning in to the NAACP Forum. We are Brockton's choice for civil rights news. Good evening. Thank you. Liberty, let our rejoice.